Hey guys, this is Junior Trader and in this video we have lot to unpack, lot to uncover. Let's jump right into it. We'll take a look at SPY, QQQ, important key levels on these indices, take a look at price action, what the sentiment is telling us, what the price will be doing in coming days and weeks. We'll also take a look at XLK and SMH index today. And also in the tech stocks, we'll take a look at Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta, Netflix, and in EVs, Tesla, NEO, and in semiconductors, NVIDIA, Broadcom, sorry, AMD, and TSM. All right, with that, please hit the like and subscribe if you find my videos valuable and helpful. And please remember, none of this is any financial advice and it's only for education purposes. All right, let's jump right into it and let's start off with SPY. So guys, remember we have been covering that uh, we are in a you know technically in a bear rally and the macros are not not supporting spy or even the broader market to go up from pretty much this level of 458 and my bet was on the high of 478 like everyone in the media analysts they were tossing as how the market will never come back down everything is just going to keep going up and they made people buy up here while many hedge funds and big investors sold. Now, I have been calling out this, you know, we will not be able to go high. These are just the pullbacks in the downward trend, like it's the retest, right? Now, we, uh, wow, that was a smiley face there. Um, so what, where we can go with SPY, guys? So SPY, we are, okay, this is what I'll say any bounce if you would have on SPY will be at this 200 days moving average. There's a huge potential for SPY to now come and test this 200 days moving average touchdown. This also coincides with some really good support here we have. So here is the place where you would want to see the price action of any hope of rebound that may possibly happen. SPY is in a literally free fall right now like this. Look at the vertical line we are in. Um, if we break 480 you know this 200 days moving average not just in a one day like it's not that one candle comes one day and it's everything becomes bearish it if it can pop out right sometimes we have false breakouts so but if we break this level of 200 days moving average and also 417 then we have a bigger problem on hand okay so but the first problem we are dealing with is as a bull this is a big problem that how the spy is looking right now it's very weak um, so yeah, it can come down to $417 as the next level and that's where potentially any bounce if happens you may expect. Just please remember guys we are still 8 to 7 minutes still market closing so market is still open but on indices there is not much going to change in the last 5 to 7 minutes. Um, Alright, let's now jump into QQQ. So QQQ had this level of 354 as one of the important support which was critical one for this sort of neckline, right? And with QQ as well, we have been talking about that, you know, it's in the downtrend, it's it's a bear rally, macros are just not supporting it, so much recession, things will start deflating. Um, the bubble will start popping. And QQQ, once this continue, well, it has already broken, and if it, you know, this is pretty much it is, right? It's already below 354 and 86 cents. Uh, that's where one of the important level was to watch. Now, this opens up the door for QQQ to fall to 334 and also with the uh, where the 200 days moving averages. So this meet and greet may also happen soon on QQQ side as well. All right, so just keep that in mind. And there are some big cap tech stocks that might take QQQ down there. Look at the Microsoft Apple will be covering shortly. So just stay with me. Alrighty guys, so let's take a look at now XLK and this is a selective sector technology fund EDF. Now this one I wanna, well you can see the level as well, this one is also pretty much following SPY because SPY or NASDAQ pretty much the same style because this is mostly is a derivative of the stocks which are in NASDAQ especially. Um, with Again with this XLK consider coming down to 200 days moving average, we are almost there. We have been, we have broken this critical support level 163 which also coincides with, uh, oops, sorry, I don't have my marker on, coincides with this previous support, right? So just keep that in mind. 
there is room to fall to 153 and 49 cents and or level of 151 and 76 cents um okay now weekly i want to show you actually weekly as well on it so we have the same issue here we go on weekly that and this is something if you have been following my channel for quite some time now guys i have been talking about the scenario that don't expect this thing to just keep going up we will be forming this double top on weekly interval for not just months in my opinion but for years to come on weekly interval we have huge potential for this thing to come back down to this 200 days moving average and then we'll see the price action there but this is where based on the way the economy is recession and government shutdown stuff that is coming up you know in october so there's a lot to unpack a lot to uncover so just yeah so this is with xlk look at it how how much you know extended we are after this uh, 2020 never came back down we came back down but then it's forming this double top guys here we go right so just keep that in mind not the time to buy in my opinion and that's what i have been calling out from yeah since the time these technicals started forming all right smh now i do also want to say that guys i'm not always right you know i try to be correct in probability above 70 percent and as long as i keep doing that i am happy with my experience and you know the way i trade the market all right smh now this is the same thing on weekly interval guys this is for the semiconductors so we have this double top form technically and so expect continuation to the downside the next good support is at 132 and then we'll see the price action there but until then keep expecting the downside um any pull any bounce sure may come but i don't expect it to go up it's still in going to be in the downtrend all right okay guys so this was with um the the indices so now let's go to our tech stocks and let's start off with apple so apple let the chart load and what we are seeing on is first on the daily level Let's cover that. So across the board, I'm sorry, guys, if I didn't show you. Well, yeah, this, bo this board uh, down here is the my indicator, and these automatic level are also part of my indicator. If this is something you are interested in with other, you know, my trading bots, uh, you can join the trading bots membership and you'll have access to it. Um, so you can see across the board, we are bearish. I should have shown this on QQQ as well. My apologies if I didn't quite, you know, uh, broad attention here but you can see also on qqq across the board we are bearish even on spy across the board and you can set these settings whichever interval you want to track um it's so we are across the board bearish let's go back to apple now so um with apple what are we seeing is that across the board bearish and then we were talking about that if apple breaks 173 will come down to 171 that's where we are. We are still in the downtrend in Apple um, and continues to break. This is if again, like this continues to break, then we have a room. We, we can come down to 200 days moving average. That's where if any bounce comes may come, but, and if that breaks, then we have another set of problems on our hand. Okay. So, but yeah, expect some bounce at 200 days moving average. Um, yeah, even if it breaks straight below, it will do a pop back up and test this out from underneath, okay? Apple is not looking strong. It's looking weak. I can take you even on the hourly interval on it. And let's take a look at that. Um, so these are the intraday levels, guys. So yeah, pretty much it has been constantly rejecting this overhead resistance of our indicator the moving average of uh, which is red as well which means it's in the declining mode you can see uh, whenever it has tested it on apple you know it has just fallen so um yeah that's why i use my indicator you should also use it join the membership guys all right it's up to you guys you can just follow if if you just like following my videos and it works out for you just following through the chart that's fine but if you want all this stuff on your charts as well then please consider joining the membership of trading bots all right 
Okay guys, so let's take a look at Microsoft. And Microsoft, starting off with the daily level. So, and again guys, news will show up whatever they wanna show now because price action has happened, so news will follow the price action. Microsoft is also really like in a downfall. It's in the downtrend, lower highs, lower lows on daily level. Um, this level breaks will give us the range of coming back down to 200 days moving average. Very simple on Microsoft. Sure, there might be pullbacks along the ways. So just keep that in mind. You have to watch the RSI and how the things are on the hourly interval. If I take you to the hourly interval real quick, let's we can take a look at that as well. Um, yes, so RSI is beaten up. I can see already at the bottom. Now, Microsoft has been constantly just falling like a ladder step, right? So if it bounce comes, the bounce rejection may happen at 314. And these levels will automatically adapt to the recent volume based or other data that I aggregate based on that price action. Uh, if you have the settings set on my indicator to self-adaptive level, let me see what setting I have it on. Yeah, I have it on self-adaptive level. Uh, and again, you can modify as how you like. Um, yeah, there's a, a weight to the adaptive level, okay? So yeah. Um, yeah, Microsoft guys, sure, if any pop comes, consider $316 level, but that's place where it may reject again and keep falling. So just keep that in mind, all right? It's in the downtrend. That's what I'm trying to say. So, and then you can use this, uh, my dashboard that I have to get the overall sentiment. Like if higher time frame is bearish, guys, that's pretty much the sentiment that you need to be looking. And then shorter time frame you trade in intraday basis but with keeping in mind the higher time frame sentiment and that's where i really use this indicator to my benefit and all these levels also that my indicator automatically draws for you google is in the downtrend across the board bearish we are doing trying to do some pop uh, at one of the levels um, but the thing is that we might go up we might reject because we are across the board bearish so yeah, I don't trade Google. It's if it's just a swing play, it's just a swing play. It has broken this trend line as well that it was trying to follow. And this is the trend line. It gapped down that trend line, right? So this is what happens when a strong trend line breaks. It usually breaks as if gap up or gap down. So it broke as it gapped down. So that people don't get time to react to the trend line, right? Everything happens in the pre-market. Alrighty, when the liquidity is low, so that they can move the market really easily. Alrighty, um, let's take a look at Amazon. And with Amazon, we are in a free fall. We were talking about this level, 126 in my previous video as well. And, oh, sorry guys, we talked about the level of 121. That That's where the room is for it to come down. We also have 125. If, Again, trade level by level, Amazon is also in the downtrend. It's getting quite bearish with RSI oversold on multi time frame. So let's take a look at hourly interval on Amazon. Again, like guys, I would not recommend trading cool off when the sentiment with the you know, government shutdown stuff coming up all and over and over again. Uh, you just trade with the trend level to level. We're in the downtrend after sure massive sell off, some cool off may happen. That cool off may happen back to 128. Right today, it has been falling since 130. So cool off may happen. No guarantee. Cool offs are really tough to trade. So just trade level by level. That's what I would suggest, guys. All right. Um, let's take a look at Meta. And Meta is still sticky, though. It's still standing strong compared to other stocks. I would personally just stay away from it. Um, otherwise, this is gonna just stick with you not gonna do much it's it's extended to buy it and it's just not falling to short so just stay out of it um yeah in my opinion you do whatever you want to do it's your money um netflix so with netflix we have come down to this level that we have been talking about 380 if netflix want to bounce it should bounce at 200 days moving average or this level of what 379 if this breaks and 200 days moving average breaks then 349 is the next target on netflix um if any cool off starts happening this may rebound back to 397 but we called out these levels guys that netflix is giving us okay Alrighty. um let's take a look at 
Tesla now. Let's start off with the EVs and we'll start off with Tesla. So Tesla was trying to and with Tesla guys I actually want to adjust I like to adjust some time frame based on the stock I am on and with Tesla let me actually do this here we go I think this this time frame is fine yeah so guys with Tesla um, I want to be building long position but not quite yet I feel that there's more downside to it I will be watching this level of 200 to 217 there's a good amount of support here three lines very closely stacked up together with the 200 days moving average here where I'm expecting a lot of fight between bulls and the bears um, however if this level breaks you know then you know there's a downside coming on it as well no one is immune from the macro though Tesla tries its best even today well we were profitable on my bot and I have to admit like between AMD and Tesla bot like Tesla bot had a little bit of last week was really tough on Tesla bot even though it was able to minimize the losses as much as it can last week it couldn't actually generate as what profit I was expecting or what it has been doing in previous weeks this week Tesla bot has been back good so and last week there was so much of FOMC stuff going that uh, it really did not work around Tesla favor so what I'll be doing in moving forward guys I'll try to keep the bots off during FOMC days guys because it's just not worth it it's it's not worth it it's uh, yeah it's the volatility is not designed for the bot those days because technicals are, are out of the whack those days and the volatility has its own mood it doesn't work as what time frame it needs to work upon so it just you know messes up the bot so it's just not of any benefit to run the bots during those FOMC meeting days alrighty now Tesla we are though technically still in this bullish channel and I want to show you because I'm really following this bullish channel for um, even any position I want to be building so this is the channel guys you can be following now you can see that Tesla when has gone up here it has find support and mean reversion but it has gone below it has found resistance at that mean reversion so something to keep in mind with Tesla now um, if we continue to break below $240 level, then um, it opened up the door to 217 again. We are below 20 and 50 days moving average and we are a little bit rejecting any you know upside that is it's trying to do at this level of 240. Now if I go to the hourly interval and guys today I took the, the trade video that I also did on my Tesla. Check that out on my channel. Uh, you will understand my thinking process behind taking the trade on Tesla. Now Tesla across the board on my intervals that I have set are via bearish. You can set your own interval in the interval in the indicator setting if you like. Now with Tesla we rejected at one of our above level uh, for 249. On the frame that I have right now um, we again like you can adjust the density as well. I have this option of uh, of uh, intraday levels depth medium high low I have it on medium and it takes weight into account of the levels. so for me right now medium is fine uh, for this analysis um, so if we break the level of 242 it opens up the room to 228 okay um, and so the thing is that guys it has been rejecting this level of 249 it tried even today and it rejected this level again right so that's where the you know the the resistances the sellers are so if it tomorrow breaks the 242 dollars level 238 dollar level you can imagine it may come actually let me just do it this way for tesla let me do it high and uh yeah you can see more levels showing up the reason so the depth taken into account because there is not enough volume around this area right now it's a liquidity grab so it's not that the price reaction reacted here too much because it was a liquidity grab. So my algorithm takes into account between medium, high and low on a lot of the weightage importance that it gives on these you know, basis of the data. So, but yeah, you can do high if you wanna see a more granular you know, uh, details. So, um, okay. So yeah, Tesla has the room to 238 and if that breaks room to 232 and then further below that, it is technically though bearish as below 200 hours moving average as well, all right. Tesla, that was Tesla guys. Let's take a look at NEO. So NEO I want to do a little bit differently today. So NEO I'll be starting off actually with 
some rambling that I want to get out of it whenever I can. This is not a play for me anymore. Um, I have my long-term position on NEO, but I don't think I want to be holding on to that. I will be moving my money into Tesla, not right away, but I want to see the price action first. Now, uh, with NEO, actually, I want to just show you something here on the on their uh, news that, okay, guys, so here's the thing. NEO, uh, September 18th to 24, vehicle registrations, 4,000. So what I want to point out is, look at the other EV makers, Leap, Motor, Depot, they're getting close to NEO, guys. So Xpeng is falling behind, but others are getting close to NEO. So who knows? Maybe next time we'll be seeing the graph. Other automaker will be ahead of NEO. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, this is not good. I'm just being honest. Like, I have my long position in NEO, and I'm still going to provide my unbiased opinion for what I'm seeing for real, okay? Um, yeah, just because I have my long position, I'm not going to you know, say all the good stuff about NEO. I know this is not going to work out. It's just, uh, I just want to get out now of it. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of other things. As an, in, as an investor, it's not in my favor. So, all right. Um, this was NEO. Very simple. I'm going to keep it very simple with NEO. All right. Let's take a look at semiconductors. We'll start off with TSM. So, TSM is in a free fall. And actually, I'm going to keep it very simple with TSM as well. The next level we are looking at, guys, is $81. So it has a room to come back down there. And if that breaks, then the room is to $73 as well. It's on TSM, okay? So just keep that in mind. These are the levels you need to be watching. It's too weak to show us any bounce to even get above 200 days moving average. I talked about it, that if we break 200 days moving average, it's going to be a big problem. And that's the big problem we are seeing now. It's gapping down and falling, gapping down and falling. AMD. Um, AMD, uh, we are, here's the thing, we, you know, it's trying to find some support at 200 days moving average. If any bounce has to come, it has to come and should come here. If it breaks below 200 days moving average and the following day it doesn't bounce up, finds a rejection here, more downside is coming to $88.79. Not looking good with AMD as well. We can even take a look at hourly interval across the board as well. We are bearish on the, here we go. We are bearish across the board. We are below 20, 50, 200 hours moving average as well. It has been rejecting at this upper level over and over again from last three trading days. So not expecting much. Sellers are present. And if it breaks $95.34, the next level on intraday is $93. And below that is $91. Alrighty, now favorite stock of everyone, NVIDIA. And let's talk about that. So NVIDIA compared to other semiconductors is trying its best. Um, you know, it is across the board bearish as well. Cool off, not too much worried about that, uh, that we are seeing on 15 minutes. Now with NVIDIA, let's talk about the levels on the daily first. Um, it is just around one of the critical resistance level 419. If this keeps resisting, then keeps expecting the breakdown to the downside. Now, if we are about to come down, 404 is potentially a next support. If that breaks, then 373 is within reach. Now, Nvidia is bearish. We talked about it. It's below 20 and 50 days moving average. My hunch is that I was talking about, and I'll show you the $429 level on intraday. I was talking about this level and 439. So we tested 429 already and we rejected that. So the rejection is so strong that 439 looks like it's not going to happen. So continuation of sell-off after consolidation may continue. That's where I stand with Nvidia. Now, if I go to the hourly interval, um, let me actually do that. Here we go. Yep. So this is what I was talking about in some of my videos that watch the level of 429. This is where it has the room to go up because of this area of uh, prior resistance, so, uh, which was support before. Now it's a resistance and we rejected there as well. Pretty much rejected there and has been falling. Now, yes, Nvidia is trying to find some support at 50 hours moving average. So trade like this. Now, if it breaks the level of 417 tomorrow, the downside is open. That's up to $409. Again, if that breaks, then 403. That breaks, at least for now, we can we are looking at 386. Now, 
Is there a possibility of upside? Well, in my opinion, I don't expect an upside. Cool off may start again. If it gets to more above 20 hours moving average, you can expect some upside. Okay, I won't lie. You have to watch the level. But my hunch is that we're gonna eventually keep breaking below this level of 417 and go down. I don't think this 50 hours moving average right now looking like it's strong enough because I'm seeing the rate of volume and then the weight that my indicator is giving the weighted, weighted levels. These are This is a strong resistance that it has been acting from last few days. So my hunch is that we have more downside still to come. And um, yeah, and oh yeah, something I wanted to just to show you guys. The, yes, we are in this trend line on the upside, but this could, this looks like to me a bear flag. So because we have been in this uh, falling downtrend and we are just getting out of it as a bear flag and then we might dip back into this channel. So just keep that in mind. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more looking like Nvidia may go continue to go to the downside guys. All right, this is all for this video guys. I hope you found it helpful and valuable. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video guys. All right, take care, bye.